Hi folks, Dickle F. Flockett here. On Buzz's last episode, the winner of the Gafillin Radio was chosen. Sky Carl won the contest. Here is a photo of Sky Carl with the radio. Don't touch that dial. I got something that I think you're going to like. Congratulations, Carl. You're a lucky man. How lucky can you get? I'd like to welcome everybody to part two of this 1948 Crosley TV series. Thanks. There's my parts. I spent over $200 on these parts. Got all sorts of electrolytics, resistors, capacitors, extra tubes. Uh, hopefully I've got uh, everything I need here. I hope so, Commander, for your sake. So because I have these, in part two here, I hope to get a picture on the screen, anything, a white line, a raster of any sort, static. I hope to see something on the screen in part two. In your dreams. Now that may be wishful thinking, mm -hmm. but uh, we got to think positive here. Yep. And there's a couple of days of work doing this. Now I bought a bunch of... Uh, terminal strips. I'm going to attach all these capacitors here. Very neat on the chassis. Good idea. I've got enough capacitors to replace all these wax ones, but uh, I'm going to do the critical ones first. And then from time to time we'll test it and see if we get anything. I have faith in you. So for a little bit of luck and a few of these parts being replaced, hopefully this episode will turn out good. Of course, I'm saying that now, but <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. I got the original Sam's on eBay. Hello, Sam. How are you? So this should make my life a little bit easier. This is silly. It's got the complete schematic. Let's see here. Or you've been studying this hard. Because I'm going to get serious in this episode. Yeah, right. It's got some pictures. Complete parts list. You can't even read. What's nice about the original is it's not been copied 20,000 times. So it's a little bit clearer than most of the stuff out there. Beautiful, graceful, elegant. It's in mint condition. Got the uh, alignment instructions. Think I'm ever going to get this far to align it? Maybe, but I doubt it. Who knows? Here it shows the tuner. Chances. Okay, let's look at the chassis. The first thing I'm going to do here is replace this. This is a 1280 ohm resistor. What's that? It's R120. This is the one I was getting hot. Now, I believe this was originally some type of a canned ohm resistor because on the uh, on the Sam's Sam's Photofact. It had it listed as being under here and it just had an arrow pointing to it. You couldn't actually see it. So if you look here on the chassis, you see some discoloration here, over to here, see that? No, sir. And there's like a ri rivet here that was been cut off. So there may have been some type of a resistor or something on it here. I don't know. If somebody knows, send me a picture of what yours looks like. What do you want me to do, draw you a picture? Anyway, since this was a 1280 ohm, I bought a uh, 1300 ohm chassis mount uh, resistor. I'm gonna put that right here. So since this is on the uh, chassis, it won't overheat. It's got plenty of chassis to cool it off with. Yes, indeed. So let me get that done first. There's that resistor, R120, mounted 
on the chassis here. Excellent. So we're in good shape there. Excellent. Well, there's that switch that's completely frozen. Maybe this has something to do with the problems I'm having. Anyway, I found a uh, identical switch for it. This is from my stash. It's one of those double pull, double throws. There's the vertical position switch. You're a pro at this! Hooked up, rewired. It's nice to see old uh, switches given new life. Who knows what this switch was used on, but it gets a new lease on life on this TV. I had some problems locating uh, one of the resistors that was supposed to be on this can ohm here. There's supposed to be two uh, other resistors and apparently one of them is not being used. And these two replaced one of these. But the problem is these two are the wrong value. Uh-oh. See this resistor R36A? It's supposed to be a 7K. But they put those uh, two 500 in parallel, which makes it only 250 ohms. So they had it way off. Maybe they didn't have a schematic or something. Plus this uh, R35 here, I found uh, was bad. It's supposed to be 3,900 ohms. This measures like 100 ohms instead of 3,900. Holy mackerel! So that's part of that circuit that was getting this really hot. Maybe it got hot and took this one out. Who knows? Well, I took the top off the tuner there so we can get a good look at it. Let's just turn the dial here and we'll see what, uh, what happens here. Isn't that weird? That's so weird though, isn't that weird? Take a look at this here. See how those things work. And I've never seen anything like, nothing ever like this. <laughs> see how they're all spread out now? That must be a mechanical nightmare to take apart. It's puzzling. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this before. Take a look at this right here. When you turn that, that slides back and forth. But ladies and gentlemen, seeing is believing. Take a look at this gear here. Looks like this portion is stripped there. Kind of slips there. Is that supposed to be like that? I don't know. I haven't the faintest idea. Who knows? Is there anybody alive who knows about this thing? Not me. Not me. Well, there's all the parts I've replaced so far. These are some of the high voltage caps here. This is like a an 05 at a thousand volts. It started to leak. So that was not long for this world. May he rest in peace. There's another one that started leaking too. This is a an 035 at a thousand volts. Some goop coming out of it. Rest in peace. Let's take a look at the progress so far. Okay, here's the 280 microfarad capacitors. I put it on a terminal strip here, made it look a bit neater. These two are the high voltage caps that I just showed you. And since I replaced those, I did some more down here. These were all wax caps here. And I did some over here. I'm almost ready to power this up. Well, it was probably gonna happen sooner or later, and it did. This is the 5U4 rectifier tube, that big honker. 
one of them. I was turning the uh, chassis to one side and there was something on the table and the tube hit it and snapped it. No! You big clumsy oaf! So this puts a dent in my plans here. I was gonna power this up. Now I gotta wait like f five or six days to get a new tube in. It's always something. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to replace all of the capacitors and check all the resistors to see which ones are bad and just replace everything in one fell swoop. I'm just a clumsy oaf. I completed the replacement of all the caps, but tracing through the circuit, I noticed there was an open coil. So you know what that means. So it's time to dig into the schematic. I gotta get my glasses out. And depending on what time of day it is, I got these glasses there. Some of them, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they work in the evening, sometimes they work in the morning. I just gotta find a pair. You all seen the Sanford and Son episode where Fred always goes into the drawer looking for glasses? Well, I get my glasses so I can see the numbers on the dial. you just settle on one pair of glasses and be done with it? You always go through this. I need all these glasses. <laughs> some of them are for TV, some of them for reading, and some of them for sewing. Ah, oh, this is easy. What are those for? These are the glasses to help me find the glasses that I need to find. Well, this is what I do. Now, one of these, at a certain time of the day, will work okay. Oh, there's not. Nope. Nope. That's not too bad. Put these away. Okay, let me show you what I've got here. So originally, this uh, 6K ohm here was open. This is like a uh, 12 watt, 10 to 12 watts. Anyway, I replaced this in the beginning at the first power up. So I thought this was okay. I'm getting continuity over here on this transformer here on the high voltage. And this here, this L28, this is open. So I'm going to take this apart to see if I can fix this because if I can't, I don't know where I'm going to get something like that, except maybe wind it, but uh, who knows what the specs are on it. It gives an ohm resistance, but that's about it. So here's this open coil. I'm a bad boy. I'm taking a picture of this just for future reference in case I can fix it. I know which wires go in which wire. I'll cut the, uh, the single red one there. And I'll cut these. Well, there it is. I bet those wires are thinner than a human hair. What do you think? I agree with that profoundly. I see a wire here. Oh, what happened here? Maybe it's just that simple. Maybe that just came off here. L28 is the horizontal linearity and it should be 37 ohms. Looks like that wire had fallen off. Hopefully, this will do it. We can measure this. I'm gonna measure this right here. And the wire's there. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. 38 ohms, this should be 37. Whew. I dodged a bullet there. You're lovely. 
Just the wire broken off this connector here. It's kind of jacked up. So let me see if I can fix that. Whoever worked on this previously did a lousy solder job on here. So he, when he soldered that, he must have uh, moved this and broke the wires off. But if you look over here, that's the thin wire. That's the part of the coil. So let me take this part off and see if I can get that wire back on. Okay, I really don't have enough length to get it over there to solder it. I was wondering if I could just pull it off. It looks like it goes up here. I wonder if I can wind it out if I pull it up a little bit more. I want a man to handle a big job. As far as I can figure out, you're the man. I don't know. If that goes inside the coil, I'm a dead man. Too risky to pull that out anymore. Okay, now that I pulled it off over here where it was embedded in the wax here, I will have enough length to wrap that around there. Only a once or twice. Let's see if I can do that. Okay, so what do you do when you thread your needle? Um, a lot of people lick the end of their thread. I'm not going to do that on camera, partly because that would be unpleasant for everyone. Let's see if I can get it through, through that hole once more. And uh, we'll put that in the hole, like so. Well, you got it around twice. Let's get out the old flux and see if we can solder that. I'm going to get my tub of uh, soldering flux I've had for like 30 years. Oh hell, maybe it's 40 years. <gasps> Here goes nothing. Ready? You want me to do the drum roll thing? No, it's okay. Here goes nothing. I may have soldered it on that side there. I don't know. Let's try it. Okay, let me hook up my meter to that one side here. I've got the meter set to tone, so it should beep if it's working. Put it on ohm, see what we get. 38 ohms. Bingo. Okay, I saved that coil. If I didn't know any better, I would have swore that uh, Buzz worked on this thing and gave up on it years ago. But I swear it wasn't me. I don't believe it. Okay, I've got two wires on it. Instead of putting the second one on here, I'm just going to put the uh, second wire at the other end where this goes up here on the resistor. There's no use of having two wires on there. Excellent. It's going to go in like this. And these wires feed through the hole up here. Okay, there's those two wires on the resistor. So that's looking pretty good. Hey, that's pretty good. Take a look at this resistor here. It's supposed to be 3.3K. It's actually a 33K. And look. Oops. <laughs> it wasn't even soldered. You saw it fall down there. Yes, I did. So the guy who was in here definitely made some mistakes. I'm going to put the correct resistor in there and look for more mistakes.
And now, here's a word from our sponsor. Hi, folks. For a limited time, get your very own copy of Dickel's a cappella Christmas album. You get these great hits. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. I don't know if there be snow, but have a cup of cheer. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bells swing and jingle bells ring. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. Vixen and Blitzen and all his rain. Plus 25 more! Just send 25 bucks to Dickel F. Lockett at Hotmail.com. Specify vinyl, cassette, or 8-track. Get yours today! Don't delay! I thank you! Well, I finally received my 7K 25 watt resistor. And since I broke that uh, 5U4 rectifier tube, I ordered two of them. And I ordered uh, new ones. These aren't new old stock, these are new, new stock. What do you mean? Let's take a look at one. Pretty nifty, huh? Hey, pretty nifty, huh? Let me put this in. Let me put that in. And we're gonna fire this up. If you have to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom. You gotta get a snack, get a snack. But we're gonna have some fun. Since my box here on the amp meter, it only goes to two amps. And the TV is rated uh, for two and a half amps. I decided to buy this uh, this 3 amp gauge so it's a little bit smaller than uh, this one but uh, let me get that in there and we'll take a look at it well there's the new gauge in the box it goes up to 3 amps so this uh, TV will draw about two and a half right here so let's apply some power to this TV huh? You game? I'm game. Okay, here we go. Now with this new gauge on here, you can't see it too good, but that's the best I can do. I've got the two meters up here. Each one of these is hooked up to the B plus at different points. So if you're asking me, do I have any predictions? I have no clue. The guy who was working on this before had the same problems I did. So I tried to fix some of his mistakes, but there's a possibility there's more in there that I haven't caught. But we got to test it anyway. So, let's turn the uh, Variac hot. The box is hot. I guess we're ready to go. We'll just go up to uh, 30 volts. That's okay, let's go to 60. Looks like one of them picking up some B plus here. Both of them are picking up B plus, that's good. Let's go to 90 volts. I don't see no smoke so far. It's about 100 volts.
That's the FM radio. I think I see something here. Oh my god. You can't see it on the camera. I'm adjusting the brightness here. And I can see a little illumination on the screen here. Let me turn off one of the lights here. Excuse me. Hopefully I don't wreck anything here. Will you get out of the way? Get out of the way! Thank you. Well, you have something there. See that? This is the focus. Volumes all the way up. Well, I was hoping to get something off the screen, anything. Let me check that high voltage. I'm only getting about 4,000 on the anode there. Let me check the uh, the cap on the horizontal output tube. Not getting anything. Let me check the top of the uh, high voltage rectifier. I get some arcing, but no voltage. So basically I'm in the same boat as I was before, but this time I'm, I'm getting something there on the screen. Just playing with some of the pots in the back. Here's that switch I repaired. The vertical position switch. Doesn't really do anything. I was hoping that had something to do with it. But until I get some higher voltage, I don't think I'm going to get anything on this. So the guy who was working on this before me had the same problem. And he failed. He blew some of those uh, resistors and probably gave up on it. And so I inherited his mess. So now it's my nightmare. I've spent many, many hours on this thing just to get it to this point. So I'm going to get with Brendan and maybe he'll come up with a few ideas to get this thing going. But uh, I'm going to call this episode uh, done. My goal was to get something on the screen. And I accomplished that goal. I'm going to fix this thing if it kills me. And you know it might. So this is Buzz1151. Hoping all of you have a great Christmas. We'll see you in the next episode. Good night.
Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. And a Happy New Year. <laughs>